just arriving at Cambridge Station. Get my train. There's our famous Cambridge bauble that you can stand inside. Ooh, a new barrier. Wow. Uh, fairly early train to uh, King's Cross. And it should call a bulldog. I need to get off. The Asher and Warden should be border cost. Platform border. 7 for the 753 Thames. Welcome aboard this service to London King's Cross. The next station is Baldock. Just arrived at Baldock Station. So, next bit of the journey is to try and find a path out of the sort of northeast of the small town. So the first stage is a bit of a road walk to get to a right hand turn where I can head in the right direction. So I'm taking a bit of a cycle path to begin with. There's actually no direct paths back the way I want to go. So we'll see. Uh, I don't even register a speed. Uh, first part of the walk, a little bit of concrete linked up a few farms, and now we're on to a public bridleway, which hopefully will get me three or four miles on and uh, go from there. But this is part of the Icknield Way, which is an ancient uh, path that goes from sort of, I suppose coast in East Anglia, all the way down to Avebury and beyond. Um, people do part of it when they do the Ridgeway Trail, um, but this actually is the cycle path for uh, the Icknield Way, because the actual footpath goes far too south, too far south for me. Um, so this cycle path gives me a chance to uh, keep north on my quest to get home. Here we have the view I get to begin with. It's just farmland stretching as far as the eye can see. There's Baldock over there where I got off the train. So, oh, the idea here is that I'm going sort of south of Cambridge and then walking back home. So I've taken the mainline train to London, got off at a place called Baldock, and then it's 19 or so miles to get home. Um, most of it's going to be farmland, but we do go through a uh, huge house called Wimpole, uh, stately home, but thankfully looks like it's going to be a day when it doesn't rain. There's a lot of standing water about, uh, it's a bit muddy, but we'll see where the day takes us and what we find. First bit of livestock I've seen, some uh, sheep grazing. I always think it's funny that they uh, they just sit behind a couple of thin wires. But being sheep, get close to them, they wander away. Yeah. Lovely red kite. Lovely red kite. 
another bit of set aside at the bottom of this field. There's, these birds are around because they're after the rabbit. There's a very good cycle track. Sort of skirt around the village. The uh, sign is broken, but it is pointing to an ancient monument, but not on my way. Through the back of the little village of Ashwell, and then you come out onto a pretty good track, to be honest. It's a cycle track for the Icknield Way. Um, yeah, and then you come out of the back and one of the things you see is a tiny tennis club. you got to love this sign. No cars allowed. Empty farm vehicles, but no cars. Don't drive your car down here. How the hell you get it to here, I don't know, but don't drive your car down here. That yeah, made good progress out the back of Ashwell. I'm on something that the map says is called Ashwell Street. It's fairly straight. It makes you wonder if it was a Roman road of some sort in the past. But Ashwell Street, just going past farms. And it's a lovely day. main road archery I've got across today is the A1198. It actually follows the route of Ermine Street, which is a Roman road. So, yeah, I've driven up and down here many, many times, but it's a Roman road, or well, follows the route of the Roman road. So we didn't have to reinvent where to put things. Engineers didn't have to go out, they just copied. So this is part of the route that I'm not really sure on. So, following a map, actual paper map, that long thing you can see there, that's the uh, entrance to Wimpole Hall, the longest entrance in Britain. So I'm zigzagging around the back of another village, using my map, so we'll get there. One of these times where the path goes diagonally across the field and the farmers decided to plough the field and uh, I could see some paths on the outside so I assume that's what locals do. So you just have to get to the outside of the path, outside the field sorry, and then work your way back to where the path is. So it happens. This is an avenue of trees that's two miles long that would have taken somebody in centuries gone by up to Wimpole. That is one hell of an entrance. Oh, in the middle of this two mile avenue, there's a stream. They're currently mending the bridge. All right, do a fair amount on it. path goes around here. I love this stuff. So this is layering your hedge and then it grows up out of it and then you layer the top bit down again. Love it. Is that over engineered? Blimey. Lift up that piece of wood to get through, pull out another. Wow. Okay. Coming to Wimpole Hall itself, we have all the Christmas lights, trees changing colour. Big word, Wimpole in lights. 
coming. Coming out the back of Wimpole. So really what I've got left is up and over the ridge and back to my village. So I'm hoping I can do that before it gets dark, but we'll see. So top of the ridge, on the left hand side, we get past these trees, overlooks villages like Eversden, and then the far distance is Cambridge. So we have about another hour and a half before the light fails. So we'll see how far we can get. Oh, feels like it's been a long day. Uh, coming up for about eight hours. Uh, just passed a sign that says I've got another mile, mile and a quarter to my village. So that's quite good. Um, yeah, interesting walk. I think from about Wimpole, I knew where to go, but up to that point, I was following maps. Um, but. It's a good walk, really nice in the summer with a bit more growth around. Uh, coming the last hour of daylight as well, so should get home before it gets too dark.